So I think we're live. Howdy, Facebook Live. Sean, oh, wow. Okay, Sean Yesner here. I added to it. <laughs> yeah, thanks. With uh, Robin Lavich. And uh, we're going to give you a behind-the-scenes look at a recording of a couple of different Crushing Debt podcast episodes. So the first one I've got uh, titled up on the on the, the Facebook Live post. And are you ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow, so this will be an adventure. Uh, so, uh, okay, you ready? Yeah. Oh, yeah, talking to the <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Good Lord. Okay. Shh. Okay. On this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast, Robin Lavich with Surpass Your Goals. So welcome back to this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. My name is Sean Yesner, and I'm happy to have a guest with me this week. Uh, I have known her. How long have we known each other now? Uh, like 13, 14. Yeah, a really, really long time. Um, I can say, and she doesn't know I'm going to say this, but I can honestly say I've had a whole bunch of business coaches in my career, but uh, my guest this week has been my favorite. So thank you for that. She, because I Same. think she's the one that's held me most accountable and probably cracked the whip the most. <laughs> I'm not mean though. <laughs> not mean, <laughs> but in an accountable and supportive sort of way. <laughs> so my guest is Robin Lavich with uh, Surpass Your Goals. Robin is a professional coach for businesses, professionals, and now tweens. And so uh, Robin and I have, have uh, reconnected, and um, I wanted to have her on the podcast because she's got a great uh, bunch of information about money and about what getting life. life and coaching and accountability and all of that stuff. So welcome, Robin Lavich, with Surpass Your Goals. Thank you. And so Robin and I were talking and we were talking about what's your relationship with money? Are you single? Are you dating? Or are you married? And so what the heck does that mean? <laughs> Sean doesn't even know. I don't even I'm know. I'm keeping him in suspense. So here's the thing. Did you read um, Secrets of a Millionaire Mind? Yes. Okay. So in the beginning of that book, we had to do a blueprint. Um, and look at what our relationship was with money. Do you remember that? Yes. So here's what I realized about my relationship with money. And I've used this a lot with my clients because if you believe that money is the root of all evil, what do you think will happen? If you think money is the root of all the evil, then you think money is evil. And then you don't want it. Right. So then you either have it and lose it or you sabotage yourself to not get it. Which is why a lot of lottery winners end up bankrupt. That's exactly why, right? Because of the belief system that they have about money. Right. So interesting story about me and money and what I learned when I read this book. So my dad used to always say money doesn't grow on trees. Right. Did your parents say that? Yes. Lots of parents. People said that. They, my parents just basically said no when I asked for <laughs> stuff. But My dad didn't know how to do that. So... This is what it was like. I got an allowance. I got $20 a week, which in the 80s was a lot of money to go to the arcade. Right. So I used to stock up my money and I used to save it all up until I had a couple hundred dollars. And then I would go to Toys R Us. And I used to have, I was literally like nine or 10. I would have these cute little purses with my big wad of cash in there. And then I would get enamored by the Snoopy dolls. And I would wander away from my cart and then somebody would steal my purse. Okay. Where did, then, you, where did you grow up that people were stealing your purse? Well, I, was, I would shop. I was nine. It's not like it is now. I just walked down to the street. Okay. Right? And I had this little purse. They didn't know it had $200 in it. Okay. So now my purse gets stolen and I start crying. And I go back home. My dad's like, why are you crying? And I said, somebody stole my purse. How much money did you have? I said, $200. And he whips out and he gives me $200 back. Thanks, dad. I go back. I buy my Snoopy doll. Six months later, I save up all my money. My purse gets stolen again. <laughs> my dad goes, why are you crying? Somebody stole my purse. How much money did you have? He whips out and he replaces it. But at the same time, he would say, money doesn't grow on trees. To hell it doesn't. It does, if I lose it, it comes right back. Right. So my belief is that if you lose money, you can always remake it. And... Sometimes that's good for me, sometimes not so good. Okay. Right, because it, if I believe that I can easily make it, I'm not as frugal as I think I could be. 
But see, I've always been at the point where if, if things are starting to look bleak, something always happens where the client comes through that pays me the, the retainer in full and then I get the money and I'm able to make the bills that month. So what's your belief? My belief is that I'm always going to be able to get what I need to. I'm to, okay. I'll yeah, always be I'll okay. I'll always be okay. And Some, you always are. Someone will always come in and pay me that next installment, pay me that next retainer. I'll get the the you know check from the closing so don't, or whatever. So do you find that interesting that if your entire belief is it'll work out? It works it out. It always has. Right. Now, I've had friends that believe I'll always struggle with money. I'm always broke. They could have made 50000 a year. There are times where they made two fifty a year. And even when they made two fifty a year, they still complain they were broke. Right. That's because of the relationship they had with money. If they believe money is the root of all evil, they can't hold on to it. And right. so no matter what standard of living they have, they'll always end up being broke because that's the relationship they have. That's the single mentality. Okay. Married, I guess, would be you actually hold on to your money and um, cherish it. Money married would be you give your money to somebody else and they spend it. <laughs> that's that's what marriage. Yes. <laughs> if you're the husband. <laughs> Look, I don't know if I should admit this or not, but I don't think there's any danger of my wife hearing this episode. So I think we're. I I, I click subscribe on the podcast app on my wife's phone, so I don't think there's so so. Then what's dating? Dating, I think, is like when you have it and then you lose it. Like you just can't, you can't commit to it. So you get it a little bit, squander it, and then, yeah, you lose it. So how, so then what's the answer? I mean, I guess the question then is, okay, if, we, if we've identified what our relationship is with money and we want to change our relationship so that we have more money, how do we do that? So I had a client and she was an attorney and we looked at her revenue goals and she'd been in business, let's say six years. And she, she'd been steady, but she wasn't aware that she had been steady. So when I did an analysis of every year, she actually made roughly the same amount every year. So instantly that told me that in her mind, that's all she's capable of making. But she didn't know that that was part of that belief. And so we actually had to challenge that and when we said, well, what if you set a goal, instead of making 150, you make 200. Right. That was scary as heck. And if she kept with the belief that I'm never going to be able to make any more, then that's what would actually happen. So what you have to do is find out, number one, what's your belief, what's your relationship? Yeah. And then question that. Is that really what you want it to be? Like, do you ever see like the very spiritual people that do uh, yoga, people in the helping industry? They believe that I'm here on earth to be able to help people and not make money. So right. as a consequence, I'm broke a lot of the time because I won't capitalize on it. Right. Social workers, that's the field I came out of, they were always struggling with money because the belief was I do what I do to help people not to make money. And I actually started my own business with the belief that I want to have my cake and eat it too. Right. Why can't I help somebody and make money? Right. So Which, I changed my belief. Okay. It's, I'm, I'm thinking. I can see the wheels. I knew I, I you still, weren't going to know about this. Well, and I, I remember, so I remember it was my, gosh, I think it was my second or third year in business by myself. So 05, 06, something like that. And I remember getting into Christmas and it was one of the hardest years. It was right before the law firm really took off and really became successful. But up until that point, it was really hard. And I remember thinking to myself, I need to pay my, my two people or my one person, however many it was, I need to pay Christmas bonuses, but I didn't have the money in the bank to pay Christmas bonuses. The, the, day, the day we closed for Christmas or the day before we closed for Christmas, a client came in, paid 500 bucks cash for something, foreclosure defense or loan some, the first installment, 500 bucks cash. I gave every uh, employee 100 bucks, kept the rest of it for me, maybe reported it to the IRS. <laughs> if, if the IRS is listening, totally reported it. Um, and, but just like you said, I, I needed money to pay bonuses. But here's the thing. If you believed it always works out, then when you got that 500, you were okay to share it. Right. If you believed I'm always going to be broke and you got that money, you wouldn't have given it out. You, right. It would have altered your behavior. Right. But that belief the belief didn't create the 500. The belief created what I did with the 500. Yes. 
And, okay. and that in and of itself, once you change the behaviors, creates that momentum for success, right? Because right. you gave. Right. Okay. So then how do we change our behaviors? We change our behaviors through our thoughts. Okay. So our thought, here's the thing. I call it the ABC model. A is affect, B is behavior, C is cognition. They're all intertwined, but we collapse them and think that they're all the same and they're not. So we could have one thought that leads to a different behavior. If the thought is, I'm broke, I'm always going to be broke, it doesn't matter what I do, that doesn't create a whole lot of momentum to work hard. Right. If the belief is, I know this is only temporary, I can get beyond this, that changes the behavior like, okay, I can do this. And then you end up having more motivation. More motivation leads to positive feelings and then it creates um, a positive cycle versus a downward cycle. Right. But if you want to change it, you can change your thought, your emotion, or your behavior. So if I say, I'm too tired to go to the gym, that's my thought. My behavior is I sit on the couch. Right. My feeling is I'm like, I'll make it up tomorrow or whatever. I'll, yeah. You know, I'll well, do I end up feeling like depressed. Okay. Right? Cause you didn't go to the gym. Right. But I could actually say, I don't feel like going to the gym and then go. Right. And then it changes the whole dynamic. Okay. So you can change the behavior, the thought or the feeling. Wow. And so then that's where you come in to help. That's what I do. Yeah. I either. And so one of the things I look at is what's called alignment. So are your emotions and your thoughts and your behaviors aligned? Because a lot of times what happens is people say one thing and do something different. And so what they're saying outwardly is not actually what they're thinking. Okay. And so if they're not aware of what they're truly thinking, what? Again, I started thinking about my wife. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you want to share? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, think, I don't know if it's my wife or it's just women in general, what they say and what they mean. Well, women would say the same thing about men. <laughs> I know. Although I will say that men are socialized to be more direct. Women, yeah. women like to uh, dance around the subject a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That is a gender thing. Yeah. I'll accept that. Okay. So I think as much fun as this has been, um, I think we pretty much reached the end of this episode, but I will definitely yeah, have Robin back for this is the first of, of probably many, 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 many crushing debt episodes. But since we're sort of at the end, uh, if someone is interested in contacting you um, to get, talk to you about coaching, to, to uh, talk to you about all this stuff, how, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Go to my website, surpassyourgoals.com. Okay, cool. So uh, that is it for this week's episode, uh, but I encourage you to subscribe to the podcast because I can guarantee you that Robin will be back on future episodes, and we will talk to you in next week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. Okay, so Facebook Live, we are done with this episode, but like I said at the end of the episode, Robin will be back. So I'm gonna <laughs> guarantee. Um, I'm gonna shut down for a little bit. We're gonna turn off Facebook Live for a little bit. I'm gonna double check that this episode recorded properly, and then we'll turn Facebook Live back on again, and we'll come back with another episode. So we'll see you here in a few minutes. And the, uh, 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 the other episode is bounce back. And so I'm going to talk about how to alter your beliefs. Okay. Alter beliefs. Okay, cool. So we'll see you in a minute, Facebook Live.